some homeowners, the battle against the water has been well and truly lost. A street in Romsey was inundated at the end of last week. The people living there now have the difficult task of dealing with insurance companies and finding somewhere temporary to live. Roger Finn has the story. This part of Romsey must be becoming very familiar if you've been watching South Today recently. We were here on Friday when the river first overflowed and the water started coming down here into Bud's Lane inundating houses on either side of the road. In the last few days, the level did drop, but today it's back up higher than ever. We're absolutely gobsmacked. It's, you know, ooh, four, five, six inches higher than it has been. Chris Egg and his wife have been living in hotels since the water came in on Friday. We need to speak to insurance people quickly to know, can we rip the carpets out? Can we get the paper off the wall? All things that we know will further damage the property. Yesterday, these barriers were installed to protect against the bow wave from vehicles heading into the industrial estate further down the lane. At lunchtime, an insurance assessor came to check over the Egg's house. They had lived here less than two years. Their dream was to enjoy their retirement here. Now they've been told to find somewhere else to rent for at least six months. You have had a really torrid six days or so. How have you coped? I don't know, we just got on with it. Uh, as I say, uh, it's just another one of life's hurdles that you have to overcome and uh, give it six months and probably be back in and look, look to the future again. A few hours after we filmed, the police closed Bud's Lane. Roger Finn for BBC South Today in Romsey. Well, in the Valley of the Racehorse, Beside rising... ...are now massive lakes and some roads have been turned into rivers. Here in Romsey, the water level has fallen very slightly. It is a small constellation for the people who live here in Bud's Lane, whose homes have been flooded. Caroline and Chris are amongst those whose homes will have to be dried out and repaired. It's smelling, starting to smell. Next door's back uh, sewage is now coming out of the drain, so it's not now just nice running river water. Another victim of the flooding wants the authorities to come up with an action plan to stop it happening again. I want them to stop pussyfooting around and get their finger out and get together and do something. The County Council is already looking at what improvements could be made. My feeling is that the, the weather events are so extreme that it's most unlikely that anything the Environment Agency or the Councils do is going to really change the situation. The high groundwater levels... ...at high tide. Meanwhile, the Navy has been trying to avert flooding in Romsey from where Ben Moore reports. Selling cars is nigh on impossible when the road is a river. Garage owner Steve Carlyle had just a 20-minute window to bring supplies and staff to work this morning. Can't just stop a business at a halt. We've still got things to do, I've still got bills to pay, I've still got customers that want to collect vehicles and I'm, I'm quite willing to carry on and operate, but they're not letting us do it. The roadblock at Bud's Lane is clearly designed to stay. Concrete blocks rather than sandbags barring all traffic. There are 30 to 40 businesses on the trading estate. For one car parts company, no deliveries is not an option. Homes are also being defended from the bloated river test. HMS Collingwood again making the trip inland to sandbag houses at Riverside Gardens. Just north of here, the river test splits into multiple channels. The main channel runs through the centre of town and ones like these run past the outskirts. More water is being forced into these, hopefully to protect the centre of Romsey. Prevention's better than cure. There are areas in town now that can do nothing for the three feet underwater anyway. And if they can save this, and most of our people are in the 70 plus category along here, they can save us. I mean, I think this is a good job. But at least there's no shortage of defences here. The light dragoons from Norfolk using thousands of sandbags secured from local firms. In places it had broken down completely and we've fixed that. In other places it was about to and we've reinforced it, so hopefully it won't but river levels are still rising, as are fears for homes and businesses in this town. And more reporter will do let us know how you are coping. And homes and the threat here. We're just going to follow a sandbag through. Don't stop for us. Keep going, go on, keep going. We'll follow through. Thank you. 
Dave, the cameraman, will try and get through. Lovely. I'm told these guys, thank you very much, uh, are rather the Royal Navy, obviously, and they're rather good at this. You've got to hold up anyway. Can we take advantage of that? Thank you. And we come through and we're going to see the river test, if Dave can fight his way through. Uh, they're good at this because it's how they load the ships with the food uh, and so on. But look what's happened. This is what they've, they've created this whole barrier along the river test. I mean, it's snakes. So have another look. It's snakes right round the corner there. And there are 300 houses off to the left of this, the river test here. Very, very swollen indeed. And those houses are under serious threat. So the storm has finished and yet on it goes. And just look down this direction and how this barrier goes with this human chain. We're going to follow it all the way through. Take our moments to just find our way around because uh, I have a senior officer down in the back garden and we'll... You'll just see just what, what's... I'm taking a rose bush with me. Thank you very much. I'm sorry to hold you up. <laughs> uh, Tony Childs, who lives here, is 89. We were talking to him early, he just told me he's 89. I shall apologise for the rose bush. Right, this is what happens. It's still the river going, and you see this barrier go right round the garden while you look at that. I've got who's warrant officer Neil Castor, that's you. Hello there. Warrant Officer Neil Cassidy, tell us, you're from HMS Illustrious? That's correct, yeah. So, I mean, it's obvious what you're doing, but can you give us a sense of the bigger picture yeah, and absolutely. the challenge? Well, HMS Illustrious, HMS Lancaster, the Royal Marine Band and some other units in the Portsmouth Command have supplied manpower and this effort to this area of Romsey today. Previous to that, we spent two days filling these sandbags in right. depots around Hampshire. And what we've done now, we've been deployed on the ground to give immediate effect. You weren't filling them specifically for this job. You were we just were filling, filling them sandbags. as part of a, a whole, po a whole right. project to, to, to go where they needed to go. And isn't it amazing how the storm has gone and yet here you are still needing to build Yeah, and, and that's absolutely it. And the, working with the Environment Agency, they've let us know why we're doing this. It's not the day it rains, it's the three days later when the water rises to try and do as much as we can to help the citizens of Romsey and other areas and around. I'm, I'm not being funny, but have they told you technically how to do it? Because, I mean, we see there, you obviously you lay the plastic first and you, you wrap the sandbags yeah, we, up in it. we got a, a ten minute explanation from the Environment Agency, but that's pretty much all we need. We're used to doing this. We're trained to do this. We've recently had frontline experience doing this, particularly on HMS Illustrious. We were in the Philippines less than two months ago doing this for Op, uh, Op Patwin, which was the Hurricane Haiyan disaster relief. I mean, it's amazing. We're around this side of the house, and there you see we're looking at the, your guys coming in from the other side as well now, bringing us another barrow load, bringing it in to join in the middle. That's what we bring. We bring boots on the ground. We bring effect. We're used to doing this. We apply this to everything we do within the service, and this is just another day's work for us. Have you, have you met any of the, the residents at all in here? I mean, Tony, Tony in this house is 89, he was yeah. telling me. And likewise, we were deployed in a different area in Romsey uh, by Lakeside, and actually, uh, as well as knocking on doors, particularly for vulnerable and elderly personnel who are living around there, they were coming out to us, give, offering their support and gratitude, and they were highlighting areas which we could go and help them specifically. Out of curiosity, because we, we saw how there was a lot of politics around the reaction to the floods, and that's when the military was brought in in bigger numbers. And I think, what's the total now? It's getting up to three. 3,000, I think, around the country uh, who are involved. When were you deployed? When did you get it, know that you were going to be involved? About the middle of last week, we were put on standby. Um, we're always, as an R2 platform, HRS Illustrious, as well as Navy's... What uh, do you mean by that? R2 is our readiness status. Right. So anything, regardless around the world, within the UK, we're at a certain notice uh, to go and react to that. So whatever we can do, we will pitch up, do our bit, with HQ support and Environment Agency support and do. Thank you very much indeed. Neil Cassidy, Warrant Officer Neil, Warrant Officer Neil Cassidy, thank you. Well, you can see how, you know, a lot of water has already got into here. This is the garden path I'm on now to Tony's neighbour, who in fact is looking out of the window as well, and obviously they're delighted to see the support. But, you know, a lot of water already in the back garden, and obviously that is designed to, to minimise that damage. So we are, we are now after the storm. The storm is well out of the country. And yet here we are, one example in southern Britain of people still having to respond to the threat of the flooding. Uh, Chris Egan uh, reporting earlier. Well, the widow of... Good evening. Flood warnings remain in place tonight across the region as yesterday's rain feeds into river systems. Members of the armed forces were in Hampshire today building up flood defences along a 500-metre stretch of the river test in Romsey to try to stop it bursting its banks. 
Although the weather is improving, water levels are high and there is still a risk of flooding. Meanwhile, troops have... Hello there, a very good evening to you. I'm Tom Hepworth with the latest here in the South. It was one of the strongest images of the South's floods. Tens of thousands of sandbags laid down by soldiers in a desperate attempt to prevent the River Test breaching its banks. Well, today, work began in Romsey to remove thousands of them. And the equally tough job continues of negotiating just who will pay for the winter no one will forget. Ben Moore reports. As they were delivered, they're finally being removed. 14,000 sandbags are being stripped from the banks of the River Test in Romsey. We're pleased to see it go. We're, we're tired of looking at it now and uh, we'd be pleased to get our gardens back. You haven't got people taking a few, storing them in their garage just in case? One or two have gone missing for small building projects, I must admit, but uh, otherwise, no, they're too heavy to lift. These are Steve's pictures from February. The military fought against the rising river to try and protect homes as the market town was submerged. Whilst residents here are glad to see the sandbag wall go, the river test remains at an unusually high level for this time of year, although it is falling. It's the Environment Agency's call to remove the flood defences. Those helping clear the banks are hundreds of volunteers, many usually desk-bound in council offices. The main thing is that they're not just going to be uh, put into landfill. I know some of the sand has already been used to sprinkle on some of the recreation grounds and it can go into uh, mixing up concrete and, and anything that you can use sand for, it will be useful. It'll take a week to remove all the sandbags. This small market town can, for now at least, finally forget the floods. Ben Moore, BBC South Today, Romsey. A four-year-old girl has been...